Today, we're going to review how to hold and use some of the most common surgical instruments. A few key points I want to mention. I always encourage students to practice while wearing gloves. Just the general feel of instruments can change depending on if you have gloves on or not, so it's always best to practice the same way you'll have to execute a skill in the operating room. Also, the hand I'm going to use to demonstrate these skills is my right hand, so this is for right hand dominant individuals. I personally am left-handed, but I've learned to use these instruments both ways. We'll have another video demonstrating how to use these instruments for left hand dominant individuals. However, even left-handed surgeons may find some instruments are easier to use in the right hand, so it's always worth trying these skills both ways to see what feels most comfortable. The first instrument we're going to start with is the forcept. The best way to use this is to hold it like a pencil in your hand. You generally don't want to be too close or too far away from the tip of the instrument. Somewhere in the middle is often best. Many of us will want to apply a lot of pressure when using this instrument to pick up tissue, but that generally isn't needed and may even cause your forcep tits to cross. Gentle to moderate pressure is all that's needed. Next, we'll move on to your needle drivers. Now, you may see your attending or residents hold this instrument in a variety of ways, but generally the best way to hold this instrument when you're first starting is to place your ring finger and thumb into the finger holes. Place your middle finger on the outside of the finger hold where your ring finger is. And place your index finger along the length of the instrument for stability. For locking instruments, you'll want to push out with your thumb to unlock the instrument. You may see attendings or residents palm the instrument, but I often find it's best to utilize this skill once you have a good foundation of your surgical skills and feel comfortable holding the needle drivers with your fingers first. Now, scissors may seem a bit self-explanatory, but there's actually a good way to use them in the operating room when it comes to cutting suture. When you're unsure how long to leave the length of suture, you can always ask, but generally, you can use the opened edge of the scissor to slide down the suture until you hit the knot. Once you feel that knot, turn the scissors 45 degrees before cutting, which should leave you with about a one to two millimeter tail each time. And the last instrument I'll encourage you to use are the people and patient around you. While every surgeon likes to think they have steady hands, or unwavering hands, the truth of the matter is a lot of us have a small shake or tremor. Use what's around you to help stabilize your hands or even use two hands when you're able to, to create greater stability when executing these skills.